Hi, my name is Mike from SideFX, and today we'll be going over the Attribute Create node. So, let's drop down a Geometry Container and get started. Come inside and give ourselves an Attribute Create. And it will, of course, throw an error, because it does not have any geometry to create an attribute on. So, let's drop down a Sphere, change its primitive type to Polygon to give ourselves some points to work with, and plug it in. And now you can see, if we come to the Geometry Spreadsheet, we have created an attribute on the points of our sphere. And so coming into the parameters here, you can see that attribute create does support Houdini's group functionality, as well as allowing you to specify group type. But right underneath that is this encode invalid attribute names option. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. But for now, let's just go over this number of attributes option that you're given. So this, as you might have guessed, allows you to control the number of attributes being generated by this node. So simply hitting this plus sign, will generate a second attribute on your geometry, in this case, attribute two. And it'll open it up for you down here for you to change everything as you want. In this example, we only need the one, so we can just hit this minus sign and get rid of it. And right underneath that is the name parameter. And this allows you to control the name of the attribute you're creating. So we type in something like what. And now you can see that we are creating attribute what on the points of our sphere. Now, it's important to note that when you're naming an attribute, you can only use letters, numbers, or underscores. If you were to use something, say an asterisk, a special character, it'll throw an error at you, saying that it is not a valid attribute name. And in your spreadsheet, it will replace that asterisk with an underscore. Now, if you need those special characters for whatever reason, you can check this encode invalid attribute names option, and it'll let you keep the asterisk but it'll also give you this strange series of letters, numbers, and underscores in parentheses to the right of it. And so what this option is doing is it's taking your invalid attribute name and it's putting it in terms that Houdini can understand so you can call it back later. And so now, if you do want to call it back later, let's give an example of how to do that. So we're going to drop down a point wrangle and write a little, little bit of X. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this attribute name, which is a string, that being just a series of characters and we're going to assign it to another string variable so we can like actually we can see it in the spreadsheet we can see that we've got that value so how we're going to do that is first we need a string attribute so we're going to come in here and type in s for string and then at for attribute and then the name doesn't really matter so let's just go with something like foo and then we're going to set it equal to the decoded string of characters here and so we're going to type in decode to decode whatever we give it we're going to open up a quotation mark because this is, again, a string of characters. And then we're going to type in what's there. So xn, double underscore, what, single underscore, and then 8fa. And then we're going to close the quotations and the parentheses and drop a semicolon to finish off the line. And now you can see that we have a new string variable, foo, like we've told it. And we are given the exact value of our original attribute name, that being one asterisk. And so this allows you to call in that name whenever it is you want. And so it allows you to have otherwise impossible attribute names on your geometry. And so that's what's happening there. Let's bring this back to normal and continue on. So right underneath that is this existing name parameter. And this tells Houdini what to do when it encounters geometry with identical names. So it can either generate an error on mismatched attributes, which means that everything will just stop in its tracks. It can generate a warning which allows things to continue on, but still allows you to know that they are happening. It can replace the existing attribute, which means it'll just take it over entirely. Or it can be a bit smarter and use the better type, size, and precision. So this will use the optimal attribute from whatever's coming in. Generally, this is a pretty good option. Right underneath that is the local variable checkbox. And this allows you to specify the local variable of your newly created attribute. So with certain attributes, let's use bounding box for example, you're able to call those values in later using their variables. For bounding box, it would be something like dollar sign BBX, and then that allows you to get the bounding box X value without calling the attribute. And so this allows you to specify exactly how you want the variable to be called for your newly created attribute. So if you leave it off, it will default to the name of the attribute, but in all uppercase letters. So this in that case would be dollar sign and then capital what. But this allows you to specify exactly how you want it to be called. So, for example, just W. Now you can call it by typing in dollar sign W. And so that's what's going on there. Right underneath that is the class parameter, and this allows you to control which type of geometry your attribute is being created on. 
it defaults to points, and you can see it showing up here in the spreadsheet. But if we change it to primitives, you can see it disappears from our points and reappears on our primitives. And so that's what's happening there. Next to it, however, you'll see a grayed out option called Save to Info Block. And this is grayed out because it only works when your class is set to detail. So if you have a detail attribute and you have this option checked on, it allows for a much more efficient way of loading the value of this attribute later on. And so if we were to drop down a file SOP, assuming that this geometry has been cached out, we can come in here to load and change this to info. And this will allow us to lift the value of this attribute and get it in Houdini without actually loading the geometry itself. So this can speed things up a great deal when you're working with complicated geometry, but you don't need everything in. You just need the value of this detail attribute. And so that's what this, that's what this option is doing. Let's get rid of this. All right, right beneath that is type. And this allows you to control the type of attribute you're creating, really. So let's bring this back to point. Right now it's set to float, so you can see we've got the decimal here. You can do integer, you can do vector, but if you go back to float, you can notice this secondary parameter, and this allows you to tell Houdini how you want it to perceive your float values. So right now it's just a single float and everything's perfectly fine, but if we change it to vector, you can see that it's throwing an error at us because vectors need three values. So we can give it three values, and there you go. Now you can see we have a three float instead of just a singular float. You can do position, normal, color, quaternion, which will of course expect four values. And this just allows you to tell Houdini, again, how to handle your float values. So it's just a good thing to be aware of. All right, bring this back to guess from name, take it down to one. Now underneath that is precision set to 32-bit. And this controls how accurate Houdini is with storing the values of your attributes. So a good example would be to change this down to 16-bit and change this to something like 0.7. Now, you can see that it's not actually giving us 0.7. We've got some noise in there. It's actually 0.700195. And so if we tick this up to 32-bit, it'll keep things clean for us and just give us that attribute value of 0.7. Now, it might be tempting to tick this all the way up to 64-bit and get as precise a measure as possible, but it's important to note that some parts of Houdini cannot support a 64-bit precision setting. So generally, 32-bit will get the job done. Right underneath that is this size parameter, and this, like you saw earlier, allows us to control how many channels our attribute has, going all the way up to four. And then you can set them all individually. Beneath that is this default setting, and this, you'll notice, doesn't actually change anything. And that's because the default setting is only applying to geometry that you're not writing these values to. And so let's give an example of that. Say we come up here, and we only act on point numbers 0 through 7. Now, you can see that only certain points have been given our value of 0 0.7, while the rest have been given the default of 0, which we can now change, and you can see that it updates accordingly. And so that's what's happening there. Underneath that is this Write Values checkbox, which will completely remove your ability to write any kind of values and just write out the defaults. This is good for when you're trying to assign this attribute to geometry that might not have it, and it's merging in with geometry that does, and you don't want to overwrite any existing attribute values. All right, let's turn this back on. And now we've got this Allow Local Variables checkbox, and this ties back in to what this was allowing us to do. So now, say we want to write out a value, we can call in the local variables of something else. So let's use the bounding box example again. And now you can see that we've written out the bounding box x value to the specified geometry. If we come up here and remove this group, now you can see it is assigning it to everything. But if we turn off this box, it will speed things up a little, but it'll also throw an error because it does not allow local variables anymore. So we just come in here and delete the channels, and now you can see it's perfectly fine. This has been the Attribute Create node. Thank you for watching.